Uh, those of you that know me, I'm Jack Smith. I work with the Master Gardener program here for about the last 18 years. And uh, we're going to talk about growing vegetables in containers. Anybody ever done that? <laughs> okay. We've got one or two, one or one and a half maybe, that is, has at least tried it. Uh, very frankly, um, I live in a subdivision where they will not allow me to put in a garden. So um, we moved, my wife and I moved into Mur back to Murfreesboro. Huh. Well, we both graduated from Middle Tennessee State in 1959. And left here and went to Memphis and lived there for 40 odd years and when we retired we decided to come back to Middle Tennessee where we came from. But anyway, that's, I'm getting off the subject totally. But anyway, it's, uh, that kind of gives you a little of my history. But anyway, it's, uh, uh, I was interested, well, when we moved into the house where, we, where I live now, I got a card in the mail one day and it said, uh, earth box. I said, what's an earth box? You know, I've never heard of earth box. Anybody here ever heard of earth box? Nobody's ever heard of earth box. Well, I read a little bit about it and I decided that, um, you know, it was interesting. So I ordered an earth box and it came from Florida. It cost me $29.95 plus $5 shipping. And I finally got it. and. Uh, uh, I said, well, I'll try it and see what happens. So I said, I grow tomatoes. Well, that's not a garden. So I was within subdivision requirements. I had a, a container, not, not a garden. Well, it seems that uh, it's a real interesting way to grow vegetables. And it current turns out that this company that started Earthbox had they were growing things in Florida and if you know Florida is not the best soil in the world an awful lot of sand and a lot of stuff so they were wanting to grow in Florida because of the, the uh, temperature they could grow a lot of things at different times of the year so they came up with this weird box that they could grow things in and they called it earth box well they had somewhere around 50 acres of earth boxes at one time. That's a whole bunch of boxes. I didn't bring the earth box that I bought. I bought I, because it cost me too much. I brought one, brought one today with me that I made, and I made it for 20 for about seven dollars. You can go to Walmart and get one and convert that box into a an earth box, huh. if you want to call it that. <laughs> you can call it a grow box, you can call it whatever you, uh, my vegetable box or whatever you want to, and my vegetable pot. But anyway, it's, uh, <clears throat> when we get over uh, talking about growing vegetables in containers, I'll let you take a look at it. Uh, he's already seen it. He was here a couple of months ago and I, we were talking about vegetables and. I had it with me at that time, but uh, since we're talking about growing your vegetables in containers today, I thought that I would uh, bring it back and let those who have not seen it at least be able to take a look at it and maybe copy it and do what they would like to with it. Uh, it's um, we're being filmed today, so that's going to be a, an interesting, <laughs> an interesting. You can go back if you miss something, you can go back and watch it on TV. <laughs> Vegetable gardens don't, and growing vegetables in uh, containers doesn't make your garden very big. All you need is a patio, a deck, or a balcony, or your doorstep, front doorstep, huh, maybe a windowsill. I doubt you could really grow much on a windowsill, but anyway, uh, if you live on the 25th floor of an apartment building and have a balcony, you can still grow vegetables because you can grow them in containers, believe it or not. Some people do that, but uh, not around here too much, I don't think. But anyway, access is easy because, you know, there's, you don't have any soil problem. It doesn't need very much space. It's convenient because you can place that container wherever it's con 
convenient with you. You can put it on your patio, your deck, or by the back door going from your kitchen to pick out a, 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 a green pepper. If you need a green pepper, it's right there by the door. And it's a fresh one. You grew it in your container. It's efficient because, you know, it doesn't take that much. It's economical. What kind of containers? Just use your imagination. I have seen five gallon buckets. I have seen flower pots. I have seen anything. Be sure whatever you have though, it has some drainage. Most vegetables grow and produce best when in, placed in full sun, which means at least six hours a day. Leafy vegetables, lettuce, cabbage, and herbs tolerate more shade. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> some of these vegetables like lettuce, you can actually plant in February and it will, they will grow, they will do well if planted in full sun. You can't do that in a garden because like a container, when it starts getting into May and June, you can still have lettuce because you can move that container into a shade. So it doesn't get all that sun and burn up. So you're able to control the environment of the plants that you're growing in your vegetable containers by being able to move them into or out of the shade. Leafy vegetables, lettuce, cabbage, and herbs, they tolerate more shade. Watering, <laughs> you're gonna have to do your own watering. Uh, require frequently, daily, water thoroughly and deeply, and never let your soil dry out completely. Overwatering will kill your plants just as quick as not watering. You're <laughs> there has to be air in the soil. There has to be some oxygen in the soil. If you overwater, you're cutting out the oxygen that goes into those roots and make, helps make that plant grow. So you're actually, huh, you're drowning the plant. Maybe not by covering the plant up with water, but by actually covering up the roots to the point to where they have no oxygen available to them through that root system. <clears throat> Never let your soil dry out completely and overwatering will kill your plants. Just don't water the leaves, not necessarily, because that will help contribute to uh, bacteria, fungus, and, and plants and diseases of the plant. So keep the, the leaves dry. Water the soil. Don't water the, the plant itself. The plant will get the water you put into the soil through its root system. It doesn't absorb well, there are a couple of plants, but they're not garden plants that absorb water through their leaves. So keep those plants dry. <clears throat> you can use aqua spikes, and this can be nothing more than you can see up there. It's a, a plastic bottle with a spike that you can buy. You know, where you can buy those, I don't know, but I have, I have seen them in a couple of uh, gardening catalogs where you can buy that and basically just stick that down in it with a full bottle of water and it will release the water gradually to the point to where it's not overwatering, so you don't have to go out there and maybe water it every day if it's the middle of July. So you can do that. Feeding, fertilization. Container grown plants require more frequent fertilization, fertilization than field grown because out there in the field that is native soil unless you start amending it uh, with a lot of things. So it's going to be the, gar the grass out here, they may add a little fertilizer to it every year. Uh, and in all probability they don't, but it's growing from the nutrients that are naturally in that soil. <clears throat> Less soil from which to obtain nutrients and apply a soluble fertilizer every week or two, if depending again on what plant that is. Some require more frequent uh, fertilization or feeding than other plants do. So make sure you know, understand what kind of plants you're putting into these containers. Now, something I'm gonna get a little bit off on and that is if you're using seed from a plant, go out and buy a package of lettuce seed. Read the back of that package. Don't say, oh, this is lettuce and just go out and sprinkle it in the soil and, and go on. Don't do that. There is a ton of information on the back of that lettuce thing. It tells you uh, how often to water, tells you what not to water, 
what to fertilize, how much to fertilize, when the plant will start coming up, how soon you can eat it, how long it will last. Take a package of seed from any place, read the back, and you'll be amazed at how much information is there. Just don't take the pack and throw it away. Some plants grow better vertically, such as tomatoes, pole beans, cucumbers, squash, cantaloupe. I have grown tomatoes, I have grown pole beans, not pole beans, but bush beans. Uh, cucumbers, I've grown cucumbers, I've grown squash, I haven't grown cantaloupe. Uh, some people have even grown watermelon in a container. How do they do that? <laughs> well, once the, when the cantaloupe or the watermelon is kind of small, about the size of a, of a, a, a big squash, they'll put something like, they'll cut the leg off a pair of pantyhose, put the fruit down in that, and then tie that up. It will grow in that pantyhose leg or foot and because it will stretch. So it will continue to grow and you can grow a watermelon on them uh, vertically. And I haven't tried that. I'm not <laughs> but uh, I have grown squash and cucumbers because they're, they're not that big and you know they hang and do okay. No problem. Now, what's wrong with your veggies? We're going to go through this right kind of quick. Uh, looks sp uh, spindly and unproductive because of insufficient light. Excessive nitrogen. Move the container to more light. Reduce feeding intervals. Uh, plants yellowing at the bottom. Lack vigor, poor color. Excessive water. Low fertility. Reduce watering intervals. Check the drainage. Increase fertility level. Plant with sufficient moisture. Uh, uh, moisture present, poor drainage, so you need to uh, <clears throat> be able to drain a, too much water out of there. Use a mixture containing high percentage of organic matter, which will help to some degree, but only to a limited bit. Increase the number of drainage holes. If you've got one in the bottom, you may need two or three to keep that uh, container uh, draining well. Uh, marginal burning or firing of the leaves high salts, uh, leach uh, the container with tap water at regular intervals, and I mean leach it out, overwater it, and let that draw water drain out. Get some of the, uh, the contaminants that's in the soil washed out. Plants grown in, study, uh, in growth are sickly, purplish color, low temperature, low phosphate, relocate, uh, increase phosphate levels. So giving you some ideas of what may be a problem. Holes and leaves and distorted in shape, that's bugs. Scout your containers, uh, squash your bugs, squish them. Use the uh, diluted soap solution. You don't necessarily have to go out and buy an insecticide of some kind. You can actually go in and make a little, a, a little thin solution of dish soap. <clears throat> uh, just a squirt in a quart bottle with a sprinkler on it. That will kill bugs, believe it or not. Plants leave the spots, dead, dried areas, powdery, rusty areas. Plant, it's a plant disease. You can remove, do remove those infected parts because if you don't, in all probability, some of that disease is going to move to another part of the plant. You don't want to put that in your compost or anything. Put them in the garbage because if you put them in your compost, all it's going to do, it's going to infect your compost. Uh, be careful of what time you're watering. Water the first thing in the morning between uh, before 10 o'clock if you can because that will make sure that any moisture that gets on the plant will dry off rather than sit there if you water it at 5 o'clock in the afternoon that water is going to sit there and maybe attract some type of uh, uh, disease that will affect your plant, so you, d you don't want to do that. Make sure that plant has an opportunity to dry off. Now, of course, you can't stop the rain on it, but that is not going to do it every day or every other day like maybe you're watering the plant. Give your plants more space. So plants grown close together tend to have more disease problems than plants that are spread out because of c uh, close contamination. Eggplant. 
Anybody here like eggplant? Okay, you can grow your own in a container. Yeah. And this is going to tell you a five gallon bucket of some kind, 18 to 24 inches between the plants. Basically in a five gallon bucket you're going to plant one plant because you need space again like we were just talking about need space between the plants or you may have a disease that gets on one that will spread then to the second one if they're too close. So <clears throat> days from seed to harvest 75 to 100 full sun it needs a fertile soil and you got some varieties there. Tomatoes I've grown tomatoes uh, a five gallon bucket <clears throat> I have grown tomatoes, one tomato plant in a container just like this one that's up here. And we'll take a look at it in a few minutes. Distance between plants, 18 to 24 inches. So huh, I can't get two in that container because it'd be closer than that. Uh, days to harvest, 55 to 100. It depends totally on the variety. Some do uh, mature a lot sooner than others. Need to stake it? Yes. You're going to have to stake that rascal somewhere by a pole that you can tie it up to next to a fence or something of that nature. Uh, full sun, yes. Uh, again, some varieties that you may want to look at. Peppers, <clears throat> uh, they don't need quite as large a container, 12 gallon, I mean a 2 gallon. Distance between plants, 12 to 18. I might be able to squeeze two into this container here. Uh, but that I've been putting one on one end and one on the other and they might work but ba basically one that size one plant. Peppers will produce a lot probably more one plant more than you will want to eat if you do them well. Days from seeds 60 to 90 required they require hot weather full sun and again a few varieties. Squash five gallon uh, pretty much the same thing there uh, as with the uh, <clears throat> uh, pepper days to harvest 50 to 60 winter squash now that's actually a fall squash that is you can grow you can plant in the fall in August or September and it will produce in the fall maybe through a mild winter uh, so 100 uh, 90 to 105 days going to take full sun uh, and again some varieties. Cucumbers, five gallon distance between plants 14 to 18 inches. Again we're talking about a container about this size for one. Seed to harvest 45 to 60. The vining types full support there is one that is a kind of a cluster type that you don't have to but uh, I don't think it's one that you'd be interested in really. Again a few more. Lettuce, and you can buy all kinds of lettuce. Leaf lettuce, you can buy the head lettuce, whatever. A distance between plants, four to six inches. You can grow in this container type container. Uh, a lot of the leaf, leaf lettuce will work well. Seed to harvest, 21 to 35 days. Um, multiple leaf cuttings. Partial shade, uh, early, early winter, early spring, full sun. When it gets to be uh, April, May, you need to move it into the shade and it will continue to grow. Spinach. <laughs> Spinach is a weird plant. <laughs> Master Gardener Program about two or three years ago <clears throat> decided they were going to grow some spinach in a, 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 a garden that they have over at the Extension Center. So they planted some in February. Did well. It grew well. People came by, harvested spinach, grew well. It, summer came, hot weather, and it just kind of struggled. But it made, a lot of it made it through the summer. It came uh, August and September when it started beginning to cool down. It started to put out, gee whiz, it snowed that winter and there was still spinach, a lot of spinach in that plant. And it had been in the ground for over a year so, you know, spinach is something that you can <laughs> probably put <laughs> wherever you'd like to, but any more. Uh, partial shade to full sun, and again, some varieties. Kale, anybody use kale? Yeah, okay. Again, a five gallon distance between plants, 10 to 15. 
uh, it's an excellent fall and winter. Partial shade to full sun, again, depending upon uh, full sun would be in, in the uh, late fall and winter. Broccoli and cauliflower, a three gallon container, distance between eight inches. Days to harvest, 50 to 70. Fall or spring, it needs full sun. And then the varieties. Onions, well, if you wanted to grow the what I call shallots of the small, little small marble size, that's fine. Uh, if you want to grow the big ones, uh, you can grow them. But they're going to take the large ones are going to take a larger container. The little small ones are going to take a smaller one. And distance between plants three to five inches depends upon what it is. Uh, from seed to harvest. <clears throat> They used to uh, need full, lots of moisture, full sun, part shade, again, depending upon what temperature it is. Cabbage, <clears throat> for five gallon, one plant per five gallon. So if you're going to grow, if you want one head of cabbage, you're going <laughs> to have more, if you want more than one head of cabbage, you're going to have more than one container. So uh, days to harvest, 65 to 100. It's a heavy feeder, so you're going to have to make sure that uh, you do a well, fertilize it well. If you want an herb garden, its containers are great because you can grow them out on your patio or your deck and they won't take up that much space. Uh, they can be to some degree an ornamental as well as something that you can use in your cooking. Now, all these came from University of Tennessee, University of Washington, Iowa State, Virginia, North Carolina. So if you wanted to, wanted to do a little more research, you can go out and go to these locations, say the University of Tennessee, just go to the University of Tennessee, and it's going to tell you where you can go to look for growing vegetables. This is a storage container I got at Walmart. I think I paid seven dollars for it. I don't know what they are now. They're probably they may be fifteen now. I don't know the way prices have gone, but you know they're seven, eight, nine, ten bucks, and it's really all you put stuff in and put it in your garage or in your attic or uh, carry it somewhere or do whatever you want to with it. You've already seen this, but anyway. I didn't. Have that last time. I didn't oh, okay. All right. Maybe not. I was thinking you did. But you see, basically, that's all it is, container. <clears throat> but you're going to you're going to change it a little bit. <coughs> and what you're going to do is you're going to take take this top, and you're going to cut it out. Real simple, you know. You can do it with a uh, if you have a little jigsaw, that's fine, or Something like that would be fine. I don't know if you could do it with a pair of scissors or snips or not. I don't think you probably can. But <clears throat> you're going to cut that out. You're not going to throw this, what you cut out away, because what you're going to do is it's going to become a bottom. <laughs> and what it is, is <clears throat> this is a bottom that goes in the bottom of your container, and it's going to look like this. What it does is it elevates your soil above where you're going to put water. But how is the water going to get up into the soil? Real easy. Because you see here, we're going to put dirt, soil, into these, down into the bottom, into the, where the water is. Okay? Holes here is to where air can be and not let the soil become extremely dry, I mean wet. <clears throat> you can see here is it's going to wick up water up through here. This is just to hold it up on these, these two. <clears throat> but you got to get water into it somehow, don't you? You do this. You cut a hole there and put a tube down through it because you do not want to water as we normally water a flower pot. You don't want to water it from the top. 
You want to water it from the bottom. That's why the holes with soil down through here and to the bottom. Same time, you do not want to overwater. So what do you do? You, dig, you drill a hole in the side so you can never overfill it. That is below the, the false bottom. Okay? You're going to over you're going to fill through a tube. You can pour water down this thing all day long and it's going to run out the hole. It's not going to get into the soil. It's up here. It will down in the bottom where it wicks up. You put soil in these holes here. It will it will wick up into the soil that's up here. So therefore you've taken <clears throat> the process of being able to water from the bottom into the soil up into the top of this container. Okay? You're going to fill this thing with soil. Pack it down into those holes. <clears throat> You're going to mount, really mound it up right here. You're going to put this on it. Well, first of all, you're going to cover it with a piece of plastic. Why? You don't want the rain to come down on it. You want to hold as much water in uh, the soil that you're putting in here as you can so you don't have to be adding water and adding water because of it's, it's evaporating. So you put a piece of plastic over the top of it and you put the left of your top on it so it holds the plastic. Okay? <clears throat> you water down through here. You plant through the plastic. But you still have the plastic up here that keeps the moisture from evaporating. I had one I've, I've got, I made about seven or eight of these. <clears throat> it would have cost me about $200 if I bought them. It cost me about uh, 50 when I made them. So, uh, but anyway, and you mound the soil up and there's a, or another weird thing that you do. If you fertilize, you do not mix the fertilizer in with the soil that's in the here. You put it in a strip or one spot. For a tomato, <clears throat> you put, put it over here, you cover it with plastic, and you take a cup full of 6, 12, 12 or something like that, put it over here on this side in a strip right on top of the soil. You plant the tomato over here on this side. Therefore, they, that way the, the tomato never really gets over fertilized. The roots come over here and they find the fertilizer and they feed from that spot. They don't get overburdened with fertilizer. Kind of a weird idea, but it works. And since you got it covered with plastic, it's not going to be uh, dissolved and down into the soil that's, that's below it. So it works well. Helps hold the moisture in, keeps it from getting over fertilized. Uh, it, uh, and it, it's, uh, it's good. I have grown a, a tomatoes in this thing that weigh a pound and, pound and a half a piece. That's a big tomato. It's like a softball. I planted a container like this with bush beans. I went two inches apart around, around this thing. I put some fertilizer, strip fertilizer down the middle. My wife and I ate green beans three meals a week for six weeks. Out of this, how much would it have cost you to go to the grocery store and bought, what is that, uh, six, three, 18, 18 days of green beans? A lot more than a packet of green beans that I planted around in this thing and the little amount of, of fertilizer. And I could put this wherever I wanted it. I could put it on my deck, I could put it on my patio, I could put it out next to the fence. And my, uh, my subdivision people couldn't say a bit about it because I don't have a garden. I have a container plant. So that's basically what I came here to tell you today. Anybody got questions? Well, I've occupied about an hour.
So I appreciate all of you being here. I don't know what we're going to be talking about next month, but uh, we'll find something. And uh, hopefully we'll see all of you back and maybe one or two more. <laughs>